Welcome back everyone. Let's play Kerbal Space Program episode number 21. The episode that almost didn't exist, but I decided to split the SSTO into two parts. Speaking of which, that's what we'll start with today, the SSTO. This is going to be with the Rapier. In fact, I've already designed it. It, although it is known as the Daedalus, it is basically a... Let's go to the Icarus 2. This is going to look very familiar from last episode. And then let's cut away to the Daedalus 1. And then we'll cut away to the Daedalus 2, which is quite a little bit different. Yep, as you can see, it's basically the same thing, but with rapier engines. Now this thing can go very, very fast, faster than the other one, the Whiplash, but I think it, I think it burns fuel faster. Let's find out. Oh, by the way, another um, thing, uh, thanks to Ace, Ace, one of the Discord members, uh, who's advised me on how to get rid of the, the rumblings, the Kraken, as they call it. Uh, you can turn on the advanced options, and in my case, the one I was really interested in for the landing gear was to adjust the spring damper from auto. You can turn it off auto, and you can adjust the spring and damper. And the damper, as it makes, as I mean, for people who know basic mechanical engineering, this is your your... Well, it's your, your damping. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> you know, and oscillations can continue forever or they can slowly die off at some kind of damping rate. And there you go, there's your damper strength. So I actually cut down the damper strength a little bit and it solved my uh, my crack and my, my vibrations. Um, I guess what happens is it tries to damp the oscillations too much. It's weird because actually trying to damp them creates I guess it creates its own resonance or something. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is how you can fix it. Or solve it. You can probably solve it other ways, too. Like, you know, just changing landing gear until you get something different. Okay, so this is Daedalus 1. She's great. In fact, we can... We might as well just try, check her out real fast. Because she can make full orbit. I think that... I hope this is the version I swapped. Oh! Oh, perfect! Perfect! Oh, nope. She got rid of it on her own. Did I have it? Is this one modified at all? Um, yes. Interesting. These are different values, even. Which is a little alarming, I have to say. Let's... Okay, now they're, now they're back and even. Okay, fine. Doesn't matter. Um, let's just go. I didn't check even which one's more efficient, but this thing is ferociously fast. Uh, notice that I did move these out a little bit. And we have... These are the standard canards. We're up. And then we go up, 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 up. Second, around 4,000 is when this thing really starts jumping off the pages. 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, there it is, around 4,000, it's going wild. 600. Probably slow down somewhere north of 1,000. But we can just keep going like this. Uh, yeah, I didn't check if this is the version that has the correct note. This doesn't. So this still has the supersonic intake, which I've been told. It doesn't need that one shock tone cone intake is actually enough for four whiplash engines. Probably that means at least enough for two rapiers. The rapier note cuts off at 30. But I have... Okay, good. I did turn on manual switching. Good. So if I was to press three... We have engines back again. Yeah, so we switched over to the rocket fuel usage instead of just liquid fuel means our oxidizer will be used and all that. Now note even what we've already done, it's getting us to 110,000, pretty, pretty high. I've achieved 120,000 with this one in one of my test cases, so it's pretty good. And uh, with the remaining fuel, I'm not even sure we have enough fuel to do it, honestly. Uh, we're going to be in space in a moment anyway, but let's turn this off. We're going to just glide over this way. Could we do it with with this one? I don't know. I 
apoapsis. I probably want to see this information in apoapsis in 30 seconds. Okay, that's good. Let's go prograde and prepare. I don't think we have enough engines to do this. Find out. 20 seconds. Try this. What? Go. Oh, switch. Three. <laughs> I would wait a little bit too long to do this now, but that's fine. We'll go to stability assist. So we have really good thrust here. The problem is we just don't have the juice to take us there. But you can very quickly see how this is supposed to go. Ideally we would uh, have enough. To circumnavigate in space, also known as an orbit. But we don't. Okay, so revert flight, um, you, that, that looks good, everything is fine here. Okay, so there's not that much, I mean this thing can be changed and made much more efficient, but the problem is it doesn't actually have a payload. This is an SSTO that can do nothing but do SSTO. So then I decided, uh, I mean kind of just like take this, let's go with the full Mark II body. So let me go over to the Daedalus II. I don't remember what 2B is, frankly. Oh, it's the wi uh, the the wheels. Yeah, I actually, I, mean, I can go to the 2B. So this is the new Daedalus. In this case, I had the medium wings because this is before I figured out how to solve the problem. Um, and you can see how it is. It's just going to be a nice long Mark II with the two engines. Very long, very, you know, it's almost like rocket-esque, right? Um, I, I wanted to make the wings as minimal as possible because we only need the wings for like a very short amount of time in the existence of this object. So even I think I might want to cut down the wings a bit more. I'll see if I can. But let's open the Daedalus 2B, because that's the one that has the smaller wings. And I, why did I do that? I mean the smaller wheels. And why am I doing that? Purely because I want um, the minimum amount of weight uh, on everything which is not rocket engine or rocket fuel. Now the rocket fuel is so heavy compared to everything else, it shouldn't be a big deal. But it is. And now we have all these new little gadgets popping up. This is from the settings when you turn on the advanced do do hookies, do hickeys, whatever they're called. Um, there's advanced options which you can turn on, and that's how I got the control of the springs and the dampers and all that. So I'm gonna leave it on. It'll be a little confusing to me. I'm used to seeing like a very specific number of options, and now there's more, so my brain doesn't parse it, you know, immediately as it used to because it was very familiar with those. What I think we're going to do is actually, ah, this is not a whole lot of wing surface. So maybe I don't want to cut this down, but I would love to cut this down a bit. Okay, let's, let's just try it. Let's go move you in. Let's uh, move you in. We may not need both of these, I don't know. Maybe we don't. Guess what? I mean, let's just make this the C, because we're experimenting with options here. Let's see what, what if, if it works. Let's just get rid of that. Okay, undo. Move this thing back out. Okay, so this is a <laughs> more, even more of a rocket, but I don't know if we needed the extra stuff. Basically, remember, wings become kind of like unnecessary at some point. Um, I think I want to move this out just a smidge. And okay, so this is the 2C. Let's actually give this one a shot. And this has the, I mean, obviously, this has the capability of doing payload stuff. So now we can actually take a payload somewhere. Let me also check my... Okay, center mass and center lift is like perfect. It should be very nicely aligned with the center of thrust. Um, we can also do a check. And this is one of the things I want to do is actually toggle. I, there's already some actions on this, I'm pretty sure. There are not. Okay, never mind. Well, let's, let's create some. Custom 1 will be for flaps. Toggle to deploy. Custom 2 will be to toggle the engine. Oh, switch mode. Which... Uh, I want that to be not automatic. Manual switching. Good. 
And then the last thing I want is, yeah. So I don't know, can I do this? I can, I think. Okay, disable same vessel interactions. So let's go to three. Can I do this? Okay, I'm, I want the, this button. I want this to be something I can map. Can I do that? Is that something I can choose or does that need to be done on the more advanced things? Maybe. What My idea here is I want to toggle on and off the use of the oxidizer liquid fuel. Um, basically I want, uh, I have as, um, in order to track how much rocket fuel I have, so obviously this is with oxidizer, so this is rocket fuel, but I have one right behind it, which is pure liquid fuel. So this is supposed to be for my space flight. And what I want to do is just like turn this off, leave this on, um, turn this off, and then leave these two on so that I know exactly how much fuel I have um, as far as space flight goes. And when I want to switch over to rockets, I want to, you know, reverse the, the on off. So I thought I would make some actions for that. Uh, it doesn't look like it's as easy as I was hoping it would be. Which is unfortunate, but okay, let's try out the 2C. I don't know how she flies, because I obviously have made modifications, cut down the wings a little bit. No idea how that'll affect things, but this is meant to be mostly a space thing. Oh boy, that's that doesn't look good, does it? But I think that the, okay, one, okay, it's not, you can see the lighter wheels are doing fine, even though damper strength is, okay, damper is 0.5 here, 0.5, yeah, so I set it down to 0.5 and that seems to have solved it. But I thought I upped the spring strength, and I think I need to. Okay, your two, a oh, 1.2. Oh, yeah, I probably didn't save it. So let's revert real fast, and let's see what happens when I revert that. I mean, do the string, the strength. Let's do 1.2. Okay, save and launch. All right, so let's try this. Um, let's see what we can do out of this one. Mainly, um, I'm trying to get it as leaned out as possible. Like really, yeah, that that's, makes me very nervous. But here we go. Well, let's try it without SAS first, just see how unstable she potentially is. Might want to go back to angling these, but I don't like that they move when you're try just trying to go up and down. Oh, see, well, that's the problem, isn't it? Gonna have to do something about that. I know, I guess I'm gonna have to move the wings back or maybe I have to move the... I think I can just get around with, get away with... Uh, moving the wheel, get landing gears back. Yeah, I think this is just moving this back is gonna have to be good enough. It's going to be a little goofy because the flaps are going to be... <laughs> well, let's just move the flaps inward a little bit. I don't like that. Let me undo that. I don't care. It'll be a little goofy. It'll just have to be a little goofy. Yeah, I don't know what this um, rigid body... On, off. I don't know what that means. But maybe I need some struts or something here. Anyways, let's try it again. I can. I had this problem before. It's not the first time I've tried to take off with an airplane that's too long and that stuff. And I put wheels on the rear before. You've seen this back in like episode four. Who knows? I can get around it. I just need to be a little bit more diligent about my takeoff. And that's fine. We'll just get a little bit more speed and be very gentle about taking off. Shouldn't have a problem here. Knock on wood. Oh, well, that's going to make things up. That, that made it better. Kind of. I think we can do this. Try launch. Okay, so probably this is not going to be a very landable aircraft, considering I'm having problems already. I could probably stick one more landing gear in the rear and just put it, you know, to prevent this from happening. <laughs> 
try it one more time, I will be. I, I want to see how it performs without the SAS, but honestly, performing with SAS is going to improve our chances of not doing what we're doing so far. So, here we go. That worked. So, let's take off SAS. See how she is. She's a little nose heavy, which is good. That's how I like them. Let's see how she does. I want to try to get her to level flight around 10k. So we can just warp this up. She definitely has more, more friction. Uh, the rapier engines, by the way, seem to have more friction than the whiplashes. Just FYI, or just my own experience. Uh, let's take her down to level flight. I don't know if this is the best way of dealing with this, by the way. out at. Alright, and then we'll try to take this thing vertical. Thirteen... I'm hoping we get to around 1500, and this is actually a little disappointing. What the hell is burning up? The gear? Landing gear? Very hard to land without that landing gear. Alright, let's go vertical. It's not the most graceful vertical, but let's see if we can get this thing uh, to make an orbit. So it says it's running out of fuel, and that might be terrifying, but it's not so bad because we have all this fuel that I haven't touched yet. We're only going to be going a thousand because of the bad change of all that stuff, but thirty thousand will kick out. Perfect. Cut. Press three to toggle. Two. Two to toggle. Then we want to quickly reverse these. You can see why I would rather have a hotkey for this. All right, now we have plenty of fuel, and we still have a little bit for landing, which is. Good. Maybe I might have burned a little bit more than I needed to, but we were kind of experimenting there. Should have just gone straight vertical. Um, what are we getting up to here? 63,000. It's pretty good. It's more than I need. Get ready to go. Prograde. Okay. Now let's see if we can get this thing into an orbit. 1,300 is probably not enough to do it. Oh well, that's okay. Let's go prograde and let's uh, let's punch it, Chewy. Hoping that this will increase as we get higher up. Okay, let's go to this. All right. So now we are a rocket. I like it though, I like the design. I mean, I like the look. These advanced can um, canards are just so cool to look at in the front, despite the fact that it means that we're carrying an extra an extra curveball, which is probably unnecessary. So you can see it's rocket-esque like structure, which is, I think, important. Basically, it is supposed to be a rocket most of the time. So don't, like, don't kid yourself, basically. Don't make yourself look like a neat little airplane. You're not an airplane. Um, got rid of the small delta wing on the Oh god, that was quick. Oh lord, I was so inefficient. That These engines are crazy. So, um, note to self, we don't have the fuel to do this. And uh, I guess the next thing to do is to accelerate all the way over to here and find out what landing in this thing is going to look like. I suspect that we are going to have a hard time with our landing gear, which apparently doesn't like to take heat. Well, let's find out. <laughs> Not the ideal way of landing, I'm sure, but we'll sort this out soon enough. 
Definitely not going to want to land like this. Nope. Okay, let's um, go prograde. There we go. Not sure how this is going to work, honestly. It's going to be a tough one. Just kind of have to hope, I guess. And let's, let's kick back three, drop it down to zero. It's done. Let's point our cockpit the right way now. Barely any fuel, but maybe it's enough. Oh, we're having some problems. She wants to go retrograde on me. One second. No, no. Oh, no. Let's go around all the way. Oh, no, no. Well, I don't know. Spinning might be the right answer to avoid any one particular part taking too much heat. We have managed to get back. Okay. But we are going 1800, which is more than my nose landing gear wants to take. Can we hide it? I can't tell if it's the landing gear or the, the module itself. Seems to be okay. Maybe that's the trick. We just come in upside down. Scare our, the pants off our pilots, but, you know, it'll be fun. Oops, that is not what I wanted to do. Or is it? <laughs> Could be another one of those spins. Alright, we got it. Close cycle. There we go. That's what I wanted. Um, I think we are in just a flat spin right now. Let's try to go, go. No, flat spins are no bueno. We just need to get out of this. Anything, just hold your. Oh, damn it. Get your nose down. Well, I'll let you uh, know how this goes. I recovered. We recovered. No, 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 no. I recovered. Damn. Okay, well, I'll see you back in a sec. So it turns out you do want wings. <laughs> Alright, this is not going to work. Well, I just had to show you this because otherwise you wouldn't believe that it was possible. This was just a test flight. This will be reverted, but... I landed in the middle of the ocean with the, the new version and I didn't lose any parts. It's amazing. So, this one is... I think this is the keeper. Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, we can probably extend this a little bit, make it um, able to support a bigger payload, but at least the concept, the premise looks to be sound. Okay, well the 2F is the one. She is the one. Uh, I landed her on water. She's made it to space and orbited. And she has a small cargo bay that, you know, in theory can be used for storing cargo. So there she is. Now, I don't really know what I'm going to do with this thing. Um, I suppose... I suppose what I might do is, like, design a really 
simple satellite of some kind. Yeah. Um, do we have any satellite missions we would want to take on? I haven't actually looked at the missions for a while. We might want to take on something else, but are there any satellite? Plan fly them. Oh yeah. Well, I have to say I do want to do this. Now conduct obs observational surveys on Kerbin. I think we can actually build a new. This is going to be fun too. Maybe a new whiplash aircraft, which its only goal is to just go extremely fast to any points of science of interest. Um, we would be very, I mean, we'd just add some science to it as necessary and then voila. But here, attach a new part that would require an engineer. Can an engineer, do we need SAS? I guess we do. We do want SAS for these air aircraft. Okay, so I don't think there's any super like nice contract here to, you know, I mean, some of them are going to cycle and expire and then a new one will pop up. I think we'll wait on new ones. Yeah, I mean, we have some contracts here which would be very easy to do, like the Explore Minimus one. Um, just don't really want to do it yet, working too much on SSTO. So, what's the SSTO of, uh, what? yeah, you I mean, let's just design this together. I have never thought about this design. I suppose I should start with our Icarus. This will have to be given a new name, but the Icarus. I don't think the 4... Oh, God, no, not the 4B. Oh, my gosh. Not the 4B. Oh, here, we'll let's start with this one, but let's call this something else, like, um... Zippy. Actually, I probably have a name on a second. Yeah, actually, I, I was going to call this the Zippy, but, you know, we'll call this the Zig, since that is one of the user-suggested names. Okay, let's pull this thing off. Zig 1's not going to have that. In fact, what we're going to do is cut this whole thing into pieces. That's right, we're going to really trim this thing out. What I want is um, probably almost none of this. I mean, we might even be better off just doing this from scratch, but let me put these parts. Those I think we'll need... I'll put this up here, but I don't think we're going to need it. Um, I'm not even sure... So I think the tail wings are actually worse than the standard canards. A little bit less surface, but better, but a better surface to weight ratio. And you know, I'm going to pull... I'm going to grab this and then pull that off. Not sure we even want that. Um, we don't want this. We don't need that. Um, we don't need the, um, yeah, we don't need this. Actually, the, the funny thing is, which one would we rather have, the, the nose or the fuel? I think we would rather have the nose. As you've seen now in the um, Daedalus, was it the Daedalus or the Icarus? I forget. It was the Daedalus. Although, honestly, that one is as, as, as <laughs> probably more accident prone than the Whiplash version, so probably the names might need to be reversed. But I guess Whiplash is not meant to orbit, so she's meant to maintain lower altitude, so Icarus fits. Okay, fine. I talked myself in and out of that one very quickly. Uh, anyway, so for fuel, we want fuel tanks. We're going to go back to the standard Mark I fuel tank. And that's, uh, that's what we're going to be doing. Yeah. This is 2.25, which is mostly... It's 2... 2 mass, two tons of just the fuel. Yeah. Okay, so I think that we're gonna want just uh, several of these and then a whiplash in engine, and that, that should be that. And I think we only are gonna want this, the Delta. I do want this one to be on that. Just go ahead and, oh, no, 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 no. Well, do this, take off that. Get a few of these guys, and then put one of these on. So this is just meant to be a, a high flying, probably wants two wings, just might be preferable. This is inspired by Ace's design, which I actually forget, forget exactly what he did, but I know it was small and I mean, I can kind of guess what we're going to look at here. Whiplash, I guess we need landing gear, oh we have landing gear here. Oh, I'm going to do that again, are ya? That looks okay. 
So it's naturally going to have a pretty high slope forward, even after we put these guys down. And undo. There we go. Good. Uh, this needs a wing. And again, I'm not going to go with my previous tailwind wing. Let me just demonstrate this. Maybe it's a bad idea, but this is 0.125. Gives us 0.61. And uh, 4 fifths of 0.61 is uh, basically 0 0.48, 0 0.49. Go to the standard canard. This is 4 fifths the weight, but instead of 0 0.48 or 0 0.49, it gives us 0.52. So it's better. I'll pluck that over here. There we go. And there's our plane. I think that's all we're going to need. Oh, nope, nope, nope. We do, want, we do want this. In fact, I think I'm going to. Can I right click this? Elvon 3. Let me just get rid of these parts and get a new Elevon 3. Okay, want this on both sides. I don't know which one this is. I actually don't know. No, it's got to be this way. So, two of them? Do we need the flaps? Um, let's say no, let's keep this so light, and this will be the Zig one. Uh, one question, what is the heat rating for this pod? 1100, 2000, that is not great. I have to say that is not great. Um, I don't know, well I guess most of the damage is going to be absorbed by the shock cone, so hopefully that's how it works. Let's give it a test. Am I forgetting something? You know, there's not. I don't have a checklist. I probably should get a checklist. And I don't want to spend the whole episode doing like the. You know, but oh god. Okay. Well, great time. Great time to. I'll save, I will save you. I will save you. Okay. Okay. Shh, 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 shh. There you go. There you go. Oh my god. Three. Why is that so high? All right. Point four five is what we ended up using. I don't know why the spring strength on this is so crazy. Let's take this down to 0.45. Well, just... I don't think this thing needs extra string strength at all, honestly. Might be auto-adjusting that, but hopefully they... Yeah, of course it was. It was auto-adjusting that. Didn't, didn't come to the right conclusion. Okay, yeah, that is pretty close to not... I am a real ding-dong. I did not even glance at the center of mass, center of lift, or center of thrust. Yeah, all those things, really. But um, I don't really care about the center of thrust. Um, this actually looks pretty good. I wanted to... I was thinking about taking the wing back further, but I don't think we need to. The other consideration here is to drop this a little bit more. Obviously, we are nearly touching the ground. Okay. All right, Zig One. Let's see how you do. It's just a just a fuel canister, a flying fuel canister. I did it without SAS too. And she's the overall. I cut back on this a little bit. Probably could limit it limit this. 30 to deploy angle, but 15 for authority otherwise. In the meantime, we're like it. We just want to get um, to around 10,000 and level off and see what kind of flight time we get.
Okay. Well, that's just about where we want to be. Let's see what our we'll call this our cruising speed, one third. Let's see what we got. I think she's going to auto-correct, by the way, and, and uh, end up climbing when she gets a little bit lower. Still waiting on that cruising speed. Still waiting on that cruising speed. Look at the burn speed. The burn time is going up as we get faster. I think that's because we're losing... Yeah, we're gaining altitude, which means we're losing flow. technically losing thrust, but actually by getting higher we are also simultaneously getting into less thick atmosphere. Kind of interesting. Dynamics here. This thing is pretty awesome. I love it. So where did we need to go? Oh yeah, right, I need to accept the contract to actually get there, but you know, we're, this is going to take a lot less time than my other journeys. In fact, we're going to have to cut down the speed just to make sure we don't start burning up. I love it. I really, really love it. The Zig is going to be my new weapon of choice for any science anywhere on Kerbin. It's just wonderful. <laughs> this is great. Okay, good. Well, I don't think we need to... to I'm not actually doing a mission here. The Zig-1, I mean, right, the prototype is actually successful, I would say. That's it's good to go. Probably should have tested landing it, so let's just do a quick test run for landing, see if she can, you know... I think the normal overwinged design that I'm so fond of is kind of applying here as well, too, because... Um, sure, we only put one wing on, but I mean, it's very, very small design, so... Hopefully we can feather our way in. It's, uh, love that about Paris. Oh, gosh! Paris aircraft. Yes, yes. <laughs> Save me. Okay. Uh, this is, uh... I mean, it's not the most maneuverable aircraft. I know I said it in the very beginning, oh, it's so maneuverable, but no, it's not really. Look at it, struggle to turn here. We need the wings further back, probably. Oh, you know what, we could just put, I think I know what we're gonna do. We're gonna move the wings forward, of all things. And then I'm gonna put some uh, elevons. Or I don't know what it'll be. I guess it'll be canards. More standard canards in the back to give it a little bit of Rear control. Oh. So, landing gear seemed like it'd be a good time to deploy. It does seem like even without that, though, it's uh, it's actually pretty good. Maybe I don't need those. It's not going to be quite as easy to maneuver around with, but yeah, that's not really the goal. It's not supposed to be that. Oh boy. Well, I could not. Like so if it comes down to landing. It would be nice to have those two in the back. Let's see, this is a pretty light, it's pretty light, these, right? 0.1, it's gonna add 0.1 total. Okay, I think I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I do like the way it looks. Okay, then we're gonna, surely gonna slide the other one up. This is now too far back. And now let's see if these are empty. You know, I've been playing a little bit of Factorio. I kind of wish you could shift right click, shift left click to apply the other ones. So yeah, even when we're all said and done, we have a very, very good balance here. That's, that's pretty cool. It basically doesn't change at all when we add these. Which means that uh, we could probably bring this forward a little bit more. 
Okay, that's interesting. This is not really gonna have very much effect now. <laughs> They're gonna act more as flaps as anything. In fact, I can probably use them as flaps if I want. Okay, cool, that's good to know. In which case, if I'm gonna do that, I might as well make that a thing. Toggle deploy, let's also uh, go back to this. Undo, um, and let's say deploy. Good, they deploy in the correct direction. So deploy angle is gonna be like this, but authority limitator, uh, authority limitator. <laughs> authority limiter is, well, actually it's probably more this that I might need to limit the, de the authority of. Let's, um, let's test it out though, okay? So we added this, move that forward a little bit more. I think everything's gonna be fine. We can expect to have lost a little bit of our efficiency, but you know, if this is supposed to be a Kerbin based aircraft, oof. I'm gonna slide those landing gear back a little bit more. Well, as much as I can really. Let's just kind of almost drape them off the aircraft. more down. It did not look good, right? And you know what? I think we're just going to have to suffer here. Oh, good, yeah. That is what I want to do. Let's do it this way, though. Okay, how are we looking? Yeah, this is pretty far back. But I, I did... I, I kind of need to do that. <laughs> We're not going to make it otherwise. <laughs> this won't be able to land at all. Alright, Zig. Just quickly give me a landing report, and then I guess we'll call this episode to a close. STOs are so fun! No, no, no. Before I do anything else, I mean, before I terminate this session, there's one more thing I want to do, and that is... This should be a lot easier to take off with, too. Oh, actually, a lot more dangerous to take off with. Oh, that was super nice. Okay, maybe there is merit to what I'm doing here. Oh my gosh, it's like a dream now. Yeah, that made a huge difference. So can I do goofy things like this? Yes, I can. We're going to stall. more confident. Oh yeah, look at the deploy. We're dropping, our speed's dropping nicely. This is going to be nice. Well, be nicer if we would land on the runway. Okay, that, I'm going to call that a success because I, <laughs> that was kind of my stupidity. Not coming, I mean, uh, coming in at a bad angle. <sighs> Try one more time. Just for fun. I love this thing. Things are so fun. Can you run into those? Hope not. I assume if I just go straight vertical, I would kill myself. Yeah. Tail. Put some, uh, you know, some like kind of tail wing, tail wheel on there, but prefer not to. Let's try this again. less intent to kill ourselves. Okay, one, deploy. Actually, don't deploy yet. Let's wait until we're lined up. This might have been my mistake last time. Okay, deploy. Did I have SAS on last time? I mean, the, it doesn't climb to the nose very easily.
the nav ball can be quite different. I guess that does let you flutter a little bit more, though. So that's that's nice. <laughs> We're not trying again. Damn it, we have to try again. Alright, let's try this again. Super dangerous, but I, I went for it anyway. Speed things up a little bit. Oh my god. Did not. Oh well. Try this again. Okay, let's go. in for our landing attempt. Not even gonna report what version what like attempt number this is. But we've been just coming down a little bit too fast. This is the first design where uh, I don't flutter. Just fall. Not sure why either. Well it might be because I have so much fuel left over. Uh-oh. Well, that was... I think that was very close <laughs> to being a disaster. Yeah, this thing does not flutter. It needs more wings to flutter. And it doesn't have them, but that's okay. We landed it. That's uh, the important thing. I'll know that I'm going to have to be careful about landing this thing wherever we end up taking it. So, that's that. That's the, uh, the Zig-1. What else do I need to cover this episode? I guess the one thing that I should go back to now that we have a nice little scouty aircraft is going to the Daedalus. And, uh, okay, so this does uh, this does part delivery. And, you know, in theory, like I said, I'll get a satellite into orbit or something. Or parts, you know, I don't know. But I kind of want, um, you know, it'd be, there's so many different ideas I have. One of them is it would be interesting to have a, what's the word? A refueling vessel. So instead of having this cargo, just load this up with more fuel and then use fuel when we get up there. I mean, use like share our fuel with someone else. But that means we need docking ports, I think. I don't know. Actually, it sounds like quite a mess. I'm not going to try to do it now. I think we'll just end this episode with the um, SSTO stuff. One more in the, in the books. I think that we'll have at least one more episode. Uh, I think I need to do one kind of mission outside of uh, Kerbin's influence. Um, not for science, we don't need that, but, you know, just to feel good about the series, we need to at least go to Duna or Eve, one of the two. So I think we'll do it that way. Um, okay, until the next episode then, thanks for watching, stay safe, and take care.